Are welcome to the most anticipated conference of the year shaping the future conference today is going to be so impactful and so enlightening oh my god you're going to wish you're going to be here there are so many leaders from all over the world coming to grace us with their presence and impact us with so much knowledge by the purpose of my early experiences in life and it was that passion that most and much of the personal experiences and continuous struggles to break through the brick wall. From my earlier work in organizing communities, mentoring students in all the South communities, I found joy in the midst of young people and inspiring them to take actions to make change happen in their communities. From my small community of Obolake, I raised the flag of hope by leading the advocacy to educate every child and ensure that violence against women and girls in Nigeria gets to zero point. Today's dream will be tomorrow's reality, says Martin Luther King. This youth conference, no doubt, is the fulfillment of my childhood dream, which began more than 15 years ago. As a young boy in a rural community in Opoleke, I looked into the busy future and hope for a time of equal opportunity to education for every time. How do you feel today? I feel very excited, you know, I feel very happy. It's kind of a first conference like this I'm experiencing and I really look forward to achieve a lot. So what are your expectations for today? I expect that the young people that I came here with will be equipped uh, with whatever values that will make them responsible citizens in the future. It's, it's an amazing event, um, Shaping the Future Conference. You would, you would agree with me that it is necessary that Nigeria undergoes some kind of shaping for the future. And in order to achieve this, we begin from the youth, from the cradle, where it is where education is foundational. And this is what Boys Champion is all about, educating the people for the future. And Nigeria so much needs this at this moment in time, especially um, with the events of the 2023 elections coming forward. This is not a political conference to be sure. Of course it is. But it's an important uh, matter at the time in this country and it cannot be divorced from any activity taking place in this country at this moment. says, oh, these people are too big. We all apply for job. 
big man, small man, the owners of the company will say who they will employ. So don't stay in your house and say, I'm qualified, I'm this, I'm that. We put you there before. You stole our money and you want to use it to intimidate us. No way. Next year's election will be based on character we can trust. So if B2B says, I will fight corruption, and I'll fight it, because corruption kills three things that makes a society. It kills entrepreneurship, it kills professionalism, and it kills hard work. So you must stop it. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm there, go to Anambra State. I was governor there. If you go there and their money is missing, God will be responsible. And when you talk about corruption, corruption is abuse of, you measure corruption, corruption index, perception index is measured on management of public assets. So if you were a governor, local government chairman or president, how did you manage the assets of the country? That includes the partisan. How many of the nations do you give job? How many of them have job? So you can go to Anambra State and ask them whether Peter B's chief of staff, commissioner, commissioner, was from his village. Not one. You can ask them includes how you manage the land and the resources of the state. You can go to Anambra State. If you see any piece of land allocated to P2B directly or indirectly, come and stop running. Well, I feel super excited and grateful to God also for the success of this event. Um, you know, we started planning this event since last year and I am, I am so glad that it turned out to be so beautiful and, and, and then massive as well. So. Um, I am happy, I'm excited. Of course, it's been deeply impactful and I'm sure a lot of us have learned a lot of things today. So what exactly inspired this uh, initiative in the first place? Um, so, I am a young person, that's number one, and I have been involved in social development for quite some time, almost 15 years, and that has actually taken me to places, you know, being on international stage, international platforms and all that. And I realized that even though my organization is making incredible impact in the United States, it is also important that I look back home and see how I can also impact the young people, the younger generation like myself. Uh, one of the things that I usually tell them whenever I speak anywhere is that if you see me as one of the you know, smartest individuals, then you, you may not have seen you know, the rest of the Nigerian young people because there are so many young people, especially all the people you saw today who are smarter than me, who are doing incredible things in their community. So beginning Shaping the Future Conference was to spotlight these gifts, these talents, and also to tell the right, the beautiful story of Nigeria, story of resilience, story of you know um, impact, story of um, young people who are making change happen in their communities, and not just the other bad story that we hear about.